Hey guys, Semphis here. Here's my video on caffeine. I put together a pretty comprehensive doc on all the benefits, pros and cons. Um, you can do more of a deep dive at the end of this video. I'm going to go over a couple key points to keep it a little bit shorter. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So caffeine's effects on gaming, um, increased alertness, improved concentration, enhanced reaction time, mental stamina, mood enhancement. So I think everyone kind of knows uh, it improves concentration and reaction times and alertness. That's pretty pretty standard stuff. Mental stamina, people might not think about this as much. Um, but let's say you normally could play eight pugs before you're kind of burnt out. Maybe with caffeine, you can play 10, 12 pugs over the course of a week. You know, that's more repetitions, more games played, more practice. It's going to help you improve. Um, obviously, enhanced reaction times in, in FPS games is great. You know, any, any first-person shooter, you know, you're going to benefit from that. I, I think these are all fairly straightforward. Um Mood enhancement, that's one that I don't personally find too much. I don't feel much happier on uh, caffeine personally, but some people do. So that, that's good if that, if that affects you that way. Um, and obviously alertness and wakefulness, that's something that like I think a lot of gamers use caffeine for because a lot of people have really bad sleep schedules. They don't sleep enough. Um, so I think that's probably the primary reason people use caffeine. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Maybe you could post like why you use it the most but I think most people use a decent amount of caffeine I always used caffeine primarily for the concentration and reaction times when I played those these were the main two things I cared about I want to be quicker I want to be faster and I wanted to be more focused and I found that sometimes I would have a little bit of like that ADHD brain when I wasn't caffeinated so I really liked it for the concentration aspect um, reaction times, I, I, I'm pretty quick in general. <laughs> Downs has got a reaction time video coming out, so you'll see there that I'm, I might be old, but I'm still fast. Um, <laughs> so moving down to dosages, caffeine dosages. Um, this is all like personal, uh, like you're going to have to test these things out on yourself, right? So uh, there, there's studies and there, and, and there's papers out there that will say like, take three milligrams of caffeine for every kg of body weight. I don't think you should listen to these things uh, per personally. You can if you'd like to try it, but I think you should just test it at yourself at home. To try different amounts. Take take high caffeine one day, medium caffeine, low caffeine, and, and just kind of figure out what you feel best on and what you play best on and kind of tailor it to your own needs because you don't always need the maximum benefit of caffeine on a daily basis, right? If you're just doing a normal practice week, you don't need to be like, maxed out and like fully a hundred percent zoned in right you might want to save that more for matches or tournaments that kind of stuff so for me whenever it was just like a normal day i would try to limit my coffee to maybe like two three hundred milligrams and then on days that i was playing like matches or something or at a tournament i might go closer to like the four or five hundred milligram route and then obviously the FDA recommends no more than 400 milligrams a day of caffeine is like the healthy range, but you know, that's your own personal choice. And I feel like a lot of people go much higher than that. Um, now, obviously we got low to moderate dosage, 50 to 200 milligrams. I think that's a sweet spot for most people. Um, high dosage, two to 400. If you're taking 400 milligrams of caffeine in one go, I think you should reset your tolerance personally, unless you're using it like at a, for big matches or at an event or something. I think that's quite a lot to take at one time. Um, also, when you go over 375 milligrams of caffeine, you risk the other aspect that a lot of people don't know about that I'll go over a little bit later. Uh, it can actually constrict. It can be a vasoconstrictor and actually make your blood vessels um, constrict a little bit more and, and, and actually decrease blood flow make eyesight worse and stuff like that. So be a little bit careful when you're going to really high doses of caffeine. You don't always want to go above like 350, 375. Now, obviously everyone's a little bit different, right? We have individual sensitivities. So some people, they have a small cup of coffee and they're wired all day. Great. You don't need to take more, right? <laughs> Whereas like someone, you might need a cup of coffee every couple hours uh, to, to feel the same effects, right? So Individual is very important. That's why I'm not a huge fan of like doing these calculations. Um, timing of caffeine, you know, caffeine is going to be in your body in about 15 minutes, but it's going to peak within 30 to 60. So I recommend 45 minutes, about an 45 to an hour before your game that you care about to take your caffeine, right? So if you got a coffee, try to drink that, you know, at 1 p.m. if your match is at 2. Um, 
that's just my, my opinion. You can test different, different ways, right? Um, it, it's up to you, but for, for me, I like to have a, like it, it kind of peaked and just like a stable blood level of caffeine. Um, and then obviously we got to avoid tolerance and dependency. You know, for, for, for me, it's just like, be smart about it, right? If you're feeling like your caffeine is going up and up and up and you need more and more and more at a certain point, just take a month break. Uh, maybe, maybe time your break f- for, uh, you know, a, a lull period in your, in your practice schedule, a lull period in, in your, um, you know, in your month, maybe you got barely any matches, no tournaments, that kind of thing. Take it then, uh, it is always a smart way. Sometimes you might not have that luxury, but still even just taking like a week or two off caffeine or, or reduce it. Like what I like to do is wean myself off a little bit. Instead of going cold Turkey, I might have a cup of coffee in the morning, then half a cup of coffee, then a quarter cup of coffee, and then kind of cut it out. And just, just, just enough to kind of get rid of the headaches and stuff that come, come uh, with it. Um, that's just me personally. There's not like a really right answer there, but just be careful that you're not permanently increasing. I had a friend who was doing like over a thousand milligrams of caffeine. And at that point, it's not even really doing anything, you know, like you're not really getting the benefits anymore. You just need it to be awake. (laughs) Um, hydration, you know, caffeine, depending on what you're consuming, if it's like a pill, it's worse than if it's like a coffee, um, in terms of dehydration, but always try to make sure that you're drinking water throughout the day. If you're drinking a lot of caffeine, Something that not everyone knows about L-theanine with caffeine. This is something that you can even take if you don't drink caffeine at all. Um, in which case, I'm not really sure why you're watching this video, but thank you. <laughs> um, so if you, this is great for anxiety as well. So if you're someone that struggles with uh, being nervous or whatever, you can just take L-theanine right by itself. Um, just Google it. You'll see all the benefits. It's generally found in, in teas, like green tea. Um, it, it, so basically what you do with L-theanine, <clears throat> is uh see it's an amino acid found in tea leaves it has calming and relaxing properties and c- can cross the blood brain barrier uh basically it kind of re- it calms you down re- uh improves serotonin and dopamine uh, mood regulation and relaxation um etc etc so basically you take this it's going to kind of counteract some of the negatives that you get with high dose caffeine so if you have a small cup of coffee you might not notice a ton when you take L-theanine with it, but if you're taking a lot of caffeine and you get the jitters, you get anxiety, maybe your breathing gets a little bit heavier. Um, that's something that L-theanine can definitely help with. I personally liked doing it with a one-to-one ratio. So if I took like 200 milligrams of caffeine, I liked around 200 milligrams of L-theanine, but some people will use um, a two-to-one. So if they take 200 milligrams of caffeine, they would use 100 milligrams of L-theanine. Just play around with it. See, see what you like. Uh, it's pretty cheap too. I believe it's about, you know, 15, 20 bucks for like 60 to 90 capsules of 200 milligrams of L-theanine. So it's, it's, pr- it's fairly cheap. Um, but yeah, it improves focus, reduces anxiety, enhances cognitive performance, wakeful without overstimulation, smooth energy release. So essentially you get a lot of overlap too because some of these things will actually like enhance the caffeine but some of them will also take away from the negatives, right? So definitely something to think about. I started taking this later in my career when I figured out about it, and I do think it helps. I've had some teammates take it, and they liked it, but again, it's one of those milder things. You notice it a lot more if you're someone that gets a lot of negatives from from caffeine. You don't notice it as much if you're someone that doesn't really even notice you took a cup any caffeine at all, right? So yeah, definitely something I would consider trying at least. Like I said, it's fairly cheap, so it's not going to break the bank. Um, Caffeine and eyesight. So this is something that I did not know. Uh, For people that have followed me, you might know I have an eye condition. I've pretty much lost all vision in my left eye. Um, I had uh, just a hereditary eye disease called Karakonovicus. I probably said that wrong. I always say it wrong. (laughs) But this is something I started noticing later in my career when I have a lot of caffeine. Since my eye was weak, I would get the effects worse. So if you over-caffeinate, take too much caffeine, like I was talking above with the vasoconstrictive properties, it will dilate your pupils. So pupil dilation, eye discomfort, vision changes, individual variability. Obviously, like some people might notice this with high doses. Some people might not at all. Decrease blood flow to the eyes. That's obviously not good. None of this seems to be serious where it's going to like damage your eyes long term. But in the short term, obviously, it's not going to help you. So what I notice is if I took too much caffeine, 
um, I would find it. I would, I'd find my vision would go like a little blurry when I was like, say I'm playing Mirage and I'm and I'm like opping mid. It was like almost like a little wave of like whoosh, uh, of like a little bit blurry and then back. And like if someone ran, it was like a, a wide swung. It'd be like they'd be a little bit blurry, a little bit harder to track, that type of thing. So definitely something to consider. Um, and just be mindful of it. If you feel like you're getting these weird, um, uh, becoming more sensitive to light, that was a big one for me. So I'd, I'd, I'd decrease my monitor brightness, try to get rid of, uh, I would get a little bit of headaches, that kind of stuff. So just be careful um, when you're doing too much caffeine because you can get a lot of negatives from that. Now, I went over this in the other video uh, before, caffeine and poor quality of sleep um, and understanding half-lives, but I want to re-go over it because I think it's important. So... When you have poor sleep, let's say you sleep three hours, when, you, when you're awake all day, you have a hormone in the body called, uh, and <laughs> I can't even speak. I'm not even going to try to say that, uh, adenosine. There we go. I got it. Um, you have adenosine in the, in, in the, in the brain, right? So it builds throughout the day. As the day goes longer and longer, you get more tired, 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 then you sleep. When you sleep, your body kind of clears that, um, adenosine from, from the brain. And when you wake up, hopefully you feel more refreshed. Now, if you only sleep three hours, two hours, whatever, four hours, you don't have time to clear that all. So what caffeine does, one, one of the effects caffeine has is it actually blocks the adenosine receptors, uh, and promotes wakefulness because it's stopping you from getting tired, right? It's stopping, uh, this hormone from, from impacting you. Now, if you have so much circulating in the brain, there's only so much caffeine can do, right? So here's the thing that I actually <laughs> say, don't drink too much caffeine if you've had poor quality of sleep. If you want to test a, a cup of coffee or whatever, that's fine. But be careful because if you drink too much, all you're going to do is you're going to get all the negatives of caffeine and you're going to feel 0% more alert or awake. All you're going to do is your eyes are going to hurt, your your heart rate's going to go up, your blood pressure is going to go up, and you're just going to feel bad. You're going to get the jitters. Um... And, and you're going to get no increased alertness. So just be careful of that, that just because you got b bad sleep, you're not going to be able to always band-aid it with caffeine. Caffeine actually works better if you're well-rested. So if you've got your sleep on point, you've got your diet on point, you got everything in your life on point, low stress, and then you take caffeine, bam, caffeine is going to work really good for you. Now, if you don't have all those things on point, then be a little bit careful and maybe try to fix them. Don't use caffeine as a band-aid. Don't go four hours of sleep, go to school all day, pound coffees, come home and play pugs all day or energy drinks. That's going to be negative for you. Okay. So understanding half-lives. Um, so half-lives are pretty, it's very hard to figure out the data on what a half-life really is for caffeine. It seems to be so much different and it's so individual. Like some people can clear caffeine in two hours. Some people are slow metabolizers. It might take up to eight hours. So in every person, you'd be a little bit different, but I just generally say around five hours is good, right? So what does that mean? If you take a hundred milligrams of caffeine in five hours, you're going to have 50 milligrams of caffeine in another five hours. You're going to have 25 milligrams of caffeine. In another five hours, you're going to have 12.5 milligrams of caffeine. So if you're someone that's sensitive to caffeine and it affects your sleep negatively, you're going to want to eliminate that as early as possible in the day um, to get quality sleep. Now, if you're most people, if you stop drinking caffeine around like 1 to 3 p.m., you're probably fine. But I would just something to consider because a lot of people think like, oh, caffeine just out of me in five hours. That is not the case. Um, and obviously it's individual, right? Some people have better sleep than others with a little bit of caffeine in their body. Um, I seem to be okay with a little bit. Like I could drink a diet Coke, which has some caffeine in it and I sleep fine. But if I had like a coffee or a pre-workout, obviously I'm, I, that's going to be a big negative for, for, for me. Um, so keep in mind about the half-life. And then another thing is people that consume caffeine first thing in the morning. When you wake up, your body naturally is releasing, uh, produces cortisol. Cortisol is the thing that's just going to kind of naturally wake you up. Um, it's a part of the awakening process and it, it peaks in 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so generally you want to wait about 90 to 120 minutes here. And by doing so, you're going to let cortisol get fully in you, wake you up and get out of your body. And then the effects of caffeine will be more pronounced. If you do not wake 
if you don't if you don't wait if you just wake up and slam a coffee you're kind of disrupting that natural process in the morning and you're not really going to get all the benefits that you would from you know the caffeine normally so just wait if you can i know some people need their cup of coffee in the morning but i think you're doing yourself a disservice you can research that more yourself if you do not believe me but it's definitely a thing so i try to usually i eat every 2 hours so i just try to i just try to do my caffeine with my second meal generally if you're someone that works out first thing in the morning and you need pre workout or something i think that's probably okay just cuz you're you're using it for the performance in the gym right or if you had like a land if you woke up and were playing a match or something maybe that's okay but just in a general day to day life i would try to avoid it in the morning um when should you stop consuming caffeine like i said it's just personal uh it just depends on the person so you're going to have to kind of know your own body try different things um and and, and figure that out for yourself cuz no one can really give you an answer here right like Maybe you're a slow metabolizer and you got to cut it out really early. Maybe you're someone that can drink a coffee and like at like 8 p.m. and you can go to bed at midnight. You're fine, right? So I don't want to sit here and be like, you need to stop caffeine at this time because everyone is so different. So I put together this doc. It'll be uploaded um, to my channel and you can tell me if you enjoyed this type of content. I'm trying to do a little bit more of the sciencey stuff for you guys here and I hope it helps. But th tell me what you think. Love you guys. Hope you're enjoying the channel and I'm just trying to improve over time. Should get my phone tomorrow, um, which will help me a lot with these videos because right now my phone is totally effed. Totally effed. So, peace boys.